In this video, we're going to talk about the powershell.config.json file used to configure PowerShell 7 environments. The config.json file contains um, settings for things like execution policy on Windows, logging settings on Linux, uh, PS module path settings, and um, experimental feature settings. So there's a couple different places that the uh, PowerShell config um, JSON file can live. The first place is in PS Home. And PS Home is the installation directory for PowerShell. So my PS Home directory is in program files, and I'm going to open the powershell.config.json file that uh, was installed with PowerShell. As you can see here, I have a couple things inside my uh, powershell.config.json file. I have the execution policy that I set for my local machine. So that was actually set using set execution policy and setting the scope to local machine. So as you can see, it's now remote signed. The other setting that I have in here is Windows PowerShell compatibility module deny list. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means uh, later on. The other place that PowerShell config.json can live is in your um, current user profile. So the easiest way to find that is by using the profile that current user current host property. So that's actually going to open the PowerShell profile. But what you can do is call split path to get the parent path of that that location. And that's where your PowerShell config.json uh, should exist. So if I actually open this in code, what you're going to see that this file doesn't exist on my machine. I haven't actually created a PowerShell config.json in my current user directory. That said, what I can do to actually create that is I can either create this JSON file like I did now, save it, and update the JSON, or I could do something like set execution policy. So set execution policy, if you set the scope to current user, is going to actually create this JSON file and populate it with the execution policy. I'm going to set my user's execution policy to unrestricted. So let's close this file, and let's open it again. And now you can see that my, ex or my PowerShell configuration.json file was uh, created and my execution policy was set to unrestricted. If I open a new terminal and I call get execution policy list, you're going to see that uh, the config JSON files are controlling the different levels of execution policy I have on my machine. So I have my, uh, this is my local machine, and it's set to remote signed, and it's also set to remote signed on my local machine here. Here's my current user um, PowerShell config.json, which is set to unrestricted. And you can see that my current user is also set to unrestricted here. So obviously, these settings don't apply to non-Windows systems, um, but this is how you set the execution um, policy. Some settings that do apply to um, non-Windows systems include things like PS module path. So if I actually go over to my PowerShell process over here, and I do env ps module path, you're going to see that I have things like um, my documents, program files, um, and Windows PowerShell, Windows PowerShell modules. But if I were to actually come into here and set this ps module path, I could do something like modules. So I'll save that, and I'll open a new PowerShell prompt, and let's see what my ps module path looks like. So now you can see that my PS module path now starts with that C slash modules folder. I no longer have my Atom um, documents folder for modules. It uh, replaces what is currently stored in the environment and kind of uh, appends all these other paths that it always appends. So that actually overrides the PS module path for the environment variables. Um, the other thing that you can set in here are experimental features. So experimental features are features in PowerShell that um, are not turned on by default, but you can actually turn them on yourself. So I am going to turn on an experimental feature, which you can do with an experimental feature, and then you have to create a JSON array. Next, I want to select a, a cool experimental feature that you know, isn't on by default. So I'm going to specify the PS command not found suggestion experimental feature. You can actually see on the experimental features page which features are in which versions. I'm currently using version 7.2, and you can see that uh, the, the ps command not found suggestion is um, it's in this version, but it's not enabled by default. Once you get this little green check mark, that means it's enabled by default. Uh, a little x means that they no longer even have this feature inside that version of PowerShell. So I'm going to go back to here and. I will save this. So I've turned on the ps command not found suggestion experimental feature. And now if I create a new PowerShell, 
prompt here and I were to just type something. What you'll see here is that D is not recognized as a commandlet, but because I have the PS um, experimental feature enabled, it's going to suggest some similar commands. So I have things like CD, MD, RD, the D drive, CP, and DR, uh, DIR. So it's kind of a cool way to play with new features that may or may not make it into the future versions of PowerShell. So definitely um, go ahead and check out some of those experimental features. I'll definitely do a video on some of the cool experimental features that are currently in PowerShell 7.2 and 7.3. There are a couple things inside of the PowerShell configuration file here that are kind of Windows only. So. Those include the ability to control implicit remoting uh, for Windows PowerShell. So you're actually not going to find those on the About uh, PowerShell config page. You'll actually see that they don't even list them here, which is kind of interesting. Um, but if you actually go to the uh, About Windows compatibility or PowerShell compatibility page inside the documentation, you're going to find some information about um, setting some things inside the PowerShell config file to disable that um, implicit Windows compatibility. So this setting, display disable implicit Windows compatibility, what that actually does is it's going to prevent, um, it's going to prevent the PowerShell 7 engine from starting a Windows PowerShell process in the background to kind of like um, work around the fact that certain commandlets don't work inside PowerShell 7. So this can be a really big performance problem, um, especially in long running things like PowerShell Universal or a web server that's running PowerShell, is having implicit remoting running for each um, run space that opens up. So it's going to start up a Windows PowerShell process and back and forth it's going to communicate between the PowerShell 7 and the Windows PowerShell process to run those commands that only work in Windows PowerShell. So that's one of the command or one of the ways you can completely disable the implicit uh, Windows compatibility layer. So it's a great way to kind of improve um, performance and kind of, you know, uh, unexpected things probably won't happen when you uh, disable that. The other thing that you'll notice is that there was a setting um, which was the Windows PowerShell compatibility module deny list that was in the default um, PowerShell.config file. So those are modules that will never load into uh, the, the PowerShell Windows compatibility layer. So you can't import PS scheduled jobs into um, PowerShell 7 uh, because by default it um, denies that in there. The other setting that you can set is a clobber deny list, which effectively, if a module exists in both Windows PowerShell and um, PowerShell 7, it's going to use the PowerShell 7 one rather than clobbering it with the Windows PowerShell one. So the PowerShell.config.json file might not be known to most people, so it's a great way for the PowerShell team to kind of add new settings to control your PowerShell environment. Um, definitely have a look at the about uh, PowerShell config document and the about Windows PowerShell compatibility document to uh, find cool settings that you can use. Again, I looked at some of the experimental features as well. Uh, you can go check out the experimental feature page and turn those on inside your config to get cool features that the PowerShell team is um, looking at releasing in future PowerShell versions.